Long time no see everyone, it's your old mate Jakargon back at it again, this time with something that's been a long time coming, but it is my entire shoe collection. As always, if you're enjoying the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and comments are very, very much appreciated. So let's start off by breaking this into different groups. We're going to go sneakers, we're going to go heels, and then we're just going to go, I guess, low boots, high boots. I suppose most of my boots are pretty high. Anyway, boots, sneakers, easy. Let's go. So starting off with a sneaker that I actually don't think I've ever spoken about on this channel, but I wear it quite often because it is my gym sneaker. This is the Veja Rick Owens, uh, I think it's like the Flyknit version 2 sneaker. I found these for a pretty ridiculously cheap price um, from Mercari in Japan and jumped on them. Went for a size 44, which is bigger than what I'd usually go because I did have a pair of the Veja hiking sneakers in 43 that were way too tight on me. Turns out this is more like a sock sneaker. These laces don't really do anything. The whole thing is you just sort of slip it on, slip it off, and they're super, super comfy. 44, a little too big. I wouldn't play sport in these, but perfect for the gym. And yeah, wear them every other day that I go. Pretty simple shoe, not too much to talk about. It's very, very light. My biggest gripe with it though, is that it's very, very loud. I'll see whether when I do the on foot portion, I can get that sound, but. I don't know about anyone else's, but these are incredibly loud to walk in. Not sneakers at all. In fact, everybody, probably my loudest shoes. And that's saying something. Moving on to one of the oldest pairs of shoes in my collection. And by that, I mean, it's been in my collection the longest. Well, one of them. This is the Primary Wired Sneaker. Uh, now, Primary are a band braced, <laughs> a band braced? Are a brand based in Portugal. And they primarily make sneakers. More recently, they also do boots. This is their Wired Sneaker. It came with dust bags, funnily enough. I got these on Grailed. I was searching for just shoes based in Australia, saw these, the price was really good. And I did just want a pair of low sneakers to wear. They come with these extra blue and red wires, thus the wide, I suppose, that you can lace into this weird little construction here to give it a bit of personality. I just haven't opted to do that. I've just left it with the black, the lacing is quite bizarre. It's double laces that crisscross through, but you just slide it in and out. You don't actually tie the laces once they are already done. But these are a pretty well made shoe. I know that they're made sustainably. I forget what their certifications are, but on the website, it does detail them. These currently aren't available, but maybe they'll bring them back. But I used to wear this shoe when I go cycling. I wear it to work when I worked in hospitality entertainment kind of stuff, just being on my feet all day. Very, very handy. The sole wearing down a little bit, but it's not actually too bad considering how much I've put them through. So they've stayed in pretty good nick. A couple of scratches here and there, but a very, very easy shoe to just get by with. Okay, next up, we have a pair of Rick Owens Short Tongue Geo Baskets. Now these were a pretty wild find, to be honest. I was on Gumtree, which is like Australia and also in England's like version of Craigslist and found these and I was pretty new to Rick things. So I had no idea whether they were real because they do have a shorter tongue. Found that they were called short tongue geo baskets, but just wasn't, still wasn't sure whether they were real or not. Messaged the guy that the price was really, really good for these considering how hard they are to find. There just wasn't a lot of time either, so I wasn't able to get the confirmation of a legit checkout, which was a major gamble on my side. But the guy had said that a lot of people had already inquired, and I said, look, I'll take it for the price. I'll come pick them up right now. And did grab them, looked at them, and inspected them all the way home. The sole was pretty bad. I've gotten the sole replaced on these as well, but that's just common for Rick sneakers. But overall, a really, really cool silhouette. If anything, I'd love to get the all black colorway because I just find it a struggle styling like the back being white, but these are still an awesome sneaker. Really great beater as well, and just very, very lucky and glad to have it in my collection. 
Okay, then finally for sneakers, we have the Rick Owens Mainline Sock Ramones. These are from 2016, made out of this gorgeous blistered lamb leather. Now, I had two pairs of these. I had the ones that I'd initially bought and recently sold. And then these ones I found secondhand and picked them up because I was just stressed out about the first pair falling apart. Turns out having two pairs of the same shoe, kind of redundant. So they're off to a better place now and just have been wearing these out, have gotten the heel replaced as well. Very common with Rick shoes. And if I could give advice on these, if you do pick a pair of these up, is to size down because these stretch. These are a 42 and can fit people that are 43, 44. 44 quite tight, but they still fit and they just, they just get stretchier. But overall, a really, really easy shoe to wear because you just slide it on, slide it off. Looks really, really nice dressed up, dressed down and so happy to have these in my collection. And I'm happy I did get the heel fixed up too because as you can see here, it was getting pretty grim. And I didn't want to just sort of, you know, pass the point of no return with these. So yeah, they've held up pretty well and look forward to wearing them as time goes on. Okay, so that sneak is done. Let's move on to boots. And I'm splitting this up into heel boots, low boots, and tall boots. <laughs> so let's start off with heel boots. And this is a pair of the Random Identities Worker Boots. Now, these are a very, very cool pair of boots made in Italy uh, by Random Identities, who generally don't make a lot of shoes. Maybe in like the more recent seasons have been putting out more shoes, but this is their staple shoe piece the worker boot and details are these really lovely little handles. Although I do not recommend using these handles at all as they will most definitely come off. And you've got this little rubberized part at the front as well as the heel too. These fit really small. I went for a 43 and they are a tight squeeze, but just to be aware, I would size up for these because they fit very, very slim and very tight. Overall, really, really like them. Just the heel is far too high and the shape of it, these are impossible to wear for longer than a few hours. And by a few, I mean three max. Anything longer than that, like I've, I tried wearing them to work there. I tried wearing them to work for a day and I made it, but I wouldn't do it again. I definitely wouldn't do it again. But yeah, really, really nice little boot. If you can find them, Sometimes you can find them very, very affordably secondhand and definitely jump on them. A good for like a special event. They do look very, very nice. And as you can see, the leather is creasing to my foot there too. I like these, they're just not super durable. Just be aware that you're not gonna be spending a lot of time in these if you do get these. Okay, next up, it doesn't look like a heeled boot, but it most definitely is a heeled boot. It is an inner heel. This is a pair of the Julius Crack. I don't know the proper name for them, but I call them a coffin sole boot. So it, at the back, the heel is up to like here. So it's an inner heel, a masked one. It'll make, it'll make you look taller, I suppose. These are a pretty crazy looking pair of boots. No laces, just the rear zip entry. And the standout feature is this wild sole. I don't know why they opted for this, but it just gives it a lot of a lot of interesting notes on the front of it all there. These are a size one, and I'm usually a size two in Julius, and these fit me just fine. These fit quite big, and so considering one is the smallest size they offer, just be aware if you do find a pair of these. But if you're a two, which is like, you know, a US nine, a one will most likely fit you as well. But a really cool pair of shoes. I've never seen anything that looks like these before. I wear them from time to time, not as uncomfortable as you'd think. And as previously, the owner has worn them in, they're quite easy to get around in and don't provide any sort of discomfort at all. But just, ah, oh, the sole is so cool. I need to find something to stop it getting dusty though, because it's, it's a lot of real estate on there. But yeah, Julius Crack Boots. All right, the last pair of heeled boots we have the margella tabbies now this is a quite recent pickup of 
mine. I got these secondhand from Japan. I went to try them on uh, at a store in the city because I really wanted to get the sizing right and found out that I would be a 42 because I tried a 43 at the shop and they were far too big. They had a 41. I couldn't get my foot in. So I said, okay, well, I guess it's a 42. They only had the lower heel one. Found these with a high heel for a great price. Picked them up. They arrived. Couldn't get my foot in. Freaked out. But then the hosiery trick had worn them a few times with hosiery. And then now since I can wear these with more regular socks or just regular tabby socks too. But the sole was in pretty terrible condition. So I went, took them to the cobbler. They got them patched up. Patched up, covered, covered. Got it resold, so I'm much less stress about that breaking out, but a really, really cool boot. I guess they're very, very much in trend and have been for quite a while now, but especially since that Tabby Swiper video came through. Quite comfortable as well. I'm very surprised. I think it's mainly because the heel is a lot smaller than the Random Identities boot. So they're much easier to spend a day in and get by in. But overall, very, very happy with these and pretty stoked to have them in the arsenal and love that they came with their little, little shoe cover, little dust bag. So yeah, tabbies, I'll do their own video showcasing them, but yeah, a new addition to the the, the shoe arsenal. Sh 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 no, I'm not gonna say it. Okay, with that, that is heeled boots. Now let's go to looking at low boots. And by low boots, I mean, I guess like mid ankle, ankle height boots. Starting off with a pair of the Yoji Put Om monkey boots. Now this is a silhouette that is very, very common. It's an evergreen one. So every season they do come out with a new styled pair of these. They're mostly always the same, except the older ones had a different type of leather used and did not have a zip. They were also made in Japan. I think it seems that from when the zip did get introduced, they started getting made in China, but I've had no issues with these ones compared to my previous ones. Main thing to remember is that these fit huge, ridiculously big. I had a pair in, I think it was four and they, fit like a 12 or a 13. It was just absurd. And then I came down to a three, which is my size in other Yoji shoes. And these still fit big. I have got like ankle padding in here to try and secure them a bit better, but just, wow, I don't know why they fit so big. This pair in particular though, I have mentioned it in their own specific video, but the sole is usually just a flat sole. This was replaced by the previous owner with a Vibram, Vibram sole and as such, they've got this really nice little tractor look to them. I really think they're unique and I have not seen another pair like this. So pretty stoked with these and just a comfortable shoe to wear for, I guess, you know, getting down and dirty work done. I don't know how durable they are. Maybe the sole will fall off like everything else <laughs> shoe related to me does anyway, but really, really like these. I love the little hiking, you know, fastener details at the top. But yeah, these monkey boots slap. And if you can find a pair for a decent price, definitely, definitely worth it. Okay, the last of our lower boots. This is the most recent pickup I've got. This is a pair of mid 90s Dirk Bickenbergs. Uh, I don't know what you call them. Back lace boots with the little like hole in the side that the lacing goes through. These are wild. These are in a 42 also fit really big. I don't understand why sizing is so inconsistent, but okay, we'll move on. Uh, these have a very interesting back lacing system here. I've not seen that with these very, very common shoes. I'm not sure what the proper name for them is, but Dirks from the 90s are quite popular for having this hollowed out hole in the heel section where you lace through a lace that kind of could also wrap around the shoe or the more popular ones or sought after ones, coveted ones even, have a steel metal, steel metal? A steel heel that can also be completely hollowed out through where a bungee cord goes through. They look amazing, but these popped up off a seller that I really like, Piham Fum, Piham Archives, and really jumped in on them because they were the correct size. For a pair of shoes that's quite old, they're about as you'd expect. They're not broken, but they do have a lot of 
residue of being like fixed up and re-glued. They are seemingly structurally sound. I did get the heels fixed up as they were in a bit of a danger zone to reaching the like woodblock part of the heel as well. So I didn't want to, you know, get to that stage and then there'd be like a massive issue, but otherwise a crazy boot. Really, really weird. <laughs> Really weird to put on because you have to relace the back and like cross them over a bit. I had always wanted a pair of the Andy back laces and also a pair of Dirks. And so mixing them together, we have these. So a very, very new addition. Have been wearing them a couple of times this week. Just getting used to it. And because they are quite old, like 25 years old. The previous owners have got their, <laughs> like their foot is molded into the insole of these. So... Perhaps I need to just put an insole of my own in because it just feels weird literally walking in somebody else's shoes. Maybe that's what they meant by that. No, I know that I'm wrong. But yeah, the Dirks, the Dirks back Lacenbergs. Very, very cool. My goodness, it is just so hot filming in this room. And the sun isn't even like glare. Oh, it's just, it's starting to get warm. We're starting to approach aircon territory, but oof, it's warm. Anyway. Let's move on to tall boots. So to begin with, this is a seldomly worn pair, but I do love them nevertheless. This is a pair of plagiarist combat boots, a one of one pair of boots that were gifted by the plagiarist. These just never went into production due to the low quantities that they were planned to be made in, that the makers just said, no, the quantities are too low. We won't do it unless it is high. And so they opted not to go for them. Overall, a very, very structured, very heavy combat boot made with French leathers and also constructed in Vietnam. Really, really sturdy. An excellent beta, a very, very structured sole. The only issue is that they're huge. <laughs> they are very, very big on my feet, so I do have to lace them up a lot. Maybe I can get insoles for them, but also I just wish they had a side zip or a back zip to make it easy to put on because having to spend a bunch of time just putting your shoes on, I I'm just pretty lazy. Overall, a very, very cool boot. You can see the details there, the name and also the name just here too. But overall, it's a shame they didn't go into production because just a really solid, like this is a boot that you could just have forever. Like I don't foresee this falling apart any time soon. Just give it some TLC and It'll be around with you forever. Next, we have one of the boots that's been in my arsenal the longest. This is a pair of, this is a pair of 2012 or 2013 Julius slashing engineer boots in a size two. And this boot came as is from the previous owner in Japan with the nothing changed on the heel or anything in terms of resoling. And it is such a sturdy pair. They're such a sturdy pair of boots. The double zips, we've got entry on the back and then the side zip adjusts silhouette. Should you want it to you know, fit in a bit more pant or flare out a bit, you have that option there as well. These were recently brought back for the Julius Permanent Collection and sold out almost immediately. They did have a different leather finish though. As you can see, this is a bit rougher overall and muted, whereas the re-released ones did look a bit shinier. I guess that's the only way I can really explain it overall. Love this pair of boots. I couldn't believe it the first time I got them. I was so unsure about them because I'd never really had a proper boot before that was kind of like, is this, is this a nice pair of boots? Is this how boots should look? Uh, but overall, very, very nice. I wear them from time to time. Again, when I need to be doing something a bit more hard yakka, not worrying about sort of hurting or dirtying the boots they're still pretty dirty from the last time i wore them on a shoot but yeah really really stoked with these love the shaft as well and if you can find a pair definitely worth it should you be able to seek them out because these again will last you a very very long time okay next up we have another pair of julius boots these are a pair of tall side zip creeper sole boots as you can see there is a crepe sole on the bottom that does seem to wear down very, very quickly. Side zip entry and a just very, very tall shaft and aggressive look with how the sole just sort of peters out at the bottom here like that. 
The zip doesn't go all the way out to the top, but then it just has the leather sort of crossing over. It is such a lovely silhouette. I've worn this out a few times. Very, very comfy to spend the night in. But I also suppose, you know, when you're drinking, anything is comfortable. So don't listen to me. Really stoked with these. And I do look at other boots and they're like, oh, I'd love to get a pair of those boots that, you know, have no laces and are quite tall. But then always look at these and it's like, I already have a pair of boots that look like this. Why am I like that? Why are we like that? It's so, so annoying. But yeah, these very, very cool. Need to just wear them more. We'll see how we go in the warmer months, but yeah. Ulysses just make really great boots and I highly recommend seeking them out to find what they've got because you can sometimes find things for such a good price and they're so, so well made. At least anything pre-2016 that I have experience with, definitely worth your time. Okay, second last in the boots. This is a more recent pickup as well and Whilst I never made an updated grail video list, I really, really should. This was definitely on there. So this is a pair of Yoji Yamamoto put on collaboration with Cherovich Kyovichki uh, Autumn Winter 2020 mock-up boots. Now, Cherovich Kyovichki is a Lithuanian shoemaker and they are known for making handmade artisanal boots and have had an ongoing collaboration with Yoji for quite a few years now. Every year they may release a few pieces per season, but these are the ones that had stood out for me when I had seen them on the runway. And it was that whole idea of, oh, you know, I'd love to get something more towards a Guidi level of artisanal boot, but I didn't want a Guidi because I feel like Guidis are just, they're just too, they're too coveted and sought after that it's just such a hassle to find a pair, honestly, and I'm lazy like that. So set out to look for these. These deserve their own video. Uh, but long story short, I had ended up with a pair of 43 uh, that fits me okay. I need a shoehorn to get into these. Just the way that the zip is like this little spiral along the side that doesn't quite give you as much space to get in as I'd hope. I have a very high instep, but these do fit and are wild. Just. The construction, the quality compared to anything else that I've worn is pretty gnarly. The soles are quite worn down from the previous owner, but that's okay. They are not damaged. They don't seem to be almost hitting the woodblock part of the heel either. Just an unreal pair of boots. And yeah, look out for the video because we'll go a bit more in depth into those. But so lucky to have found them and I hope to have them indefinitely and just keep you know, clean them up and retouching them as they go. Cause we got them. We, we got them. <laughs> yeah. Cool boots. Okay. And finally the last pair of boots, you definitely know what these ones are. These are the autumn winter 21 Yoji put on combat boots. This is my favorite pair of boots and they are the most worn pair of boots. Once we do get to the end of year and I do like a breakdown of what I've been wearing and how much I have been all year, these, I would not be surprised if these are at the top in terms of shoe. Such soft leather, side zip entry, really, really comfortable. Just, just a great pair of boots. I did end up getting another pair as backup, but have been trying to sell those because yeah, this is, what's the point of having two pairs of the same shoes? It is redundant. So if you are interested in these, these have their own video and there is a pair for sale too, but just love the overall. But just so, so happy with these. Such a funny find and really just stoked that, I don't know, I feel like they are synonymous with me now and I am synonymous with them and we love each other. <laughs> so yeah, that is that great pair of boots to end on. So yeah, it is it's really hot in here. So yeah, that's all the shoes that I have. I do have other pairs of shoes, but they are shoes that are for sale. They're not shoes that I'm actively wearing, so I didn't include them on here. If you want to find those shoes, links are in the description should you be looking to buy some boots because there's some, some arguably very cool pairs up there for sale. But yeah, which was your favorite pair? And I think I'm pretty sorted. I feel like I am falling into that hole of just acquiring shoes and doing my best to try and wear everything as much as I can. But yeah, 
What do you think's missing? Let me know in the comments below. You'll take care of yourselves, have fun, be safe. I hope you enjoy the video. And as always, don't do anything I'd do except get yourself some hosiery socks. It is gonna make some shoes much, much easier to wear. You can trust me on that. All right, I'll see you all next time. Take care, bye-bye.